Aren't you bored with seeing the same old boring tail logos? Or the same old Euro-wide schemes that they keep introducing? Or do you remember uh, this crazy livery? Now, why don't we see stuff like that again? The simple answer is cost and downtime. And you also have the environmental costs to consider. Now, during last month's Airbus Innovation Days in Hamburg, uh, Ralph Maurer, the head of the... Uh, Airbus A320 family paint shop in Airbus Hamburg talk through uh, those issues and solutions. Now let's start with something that everyone uses for airline recognition, which is, which is the tail. Now there are three methods to uh, apply complex livery design on aircraft. The one is adhesive film. In this example, we see one from Frontier Airlines. And then we have airbrush. And the example here is from TransAsia Airways from Taiwan. And then stenciling. And here we see one from American Airlines. Now let's start with, with adhesive films, which is basically a sticker, uh, usually in a few pieces that you can put together like a puzzle, which you then protect with a clear overcoat. Now Frontier Airlines is one big user of this method. They put different photographs of wildlife animals on aircraft. It just looks awesome. I mean, it appeals to kids when they go and travel and say, I want to go on that airplane with the owl or with the bear. And for those travelers based in Denver, it just radiates the Rocky Mountains identity. Now, another user of the uh, adhesive film is uh, Only Nippon Airlines with the Airbus A321, which they used uh, some years ago. Now, the advantage of having the adhesive film is that it has a total freedom of design and it is highly repeatable. But uh, there is a high material cost. Uh, a sticker for a... Airbus A320 tail will cost you about the same as an expensive car. And then there's a durability issue in the high erosion areas and many customers don't like it and they've had and they've had bad experiences with it despite the fact that the newer material is a lot better than what they had before. Now if you have a part of it that's eroded, you might have to replace the whole film. So, what about the airbrush? Now, Complex design using the airbrush enables you to build up the design layer by layer and that means using multiple working and drying steps. While this means you have, can have an elaborate design using a single paint system, I mean just look at how beautiful the TransAsia A321 tail is with this color gradation, the dragon and the, the, gold, you know, the golden disc. It's beautiful but it has a high lead time. Now the TransAsia tail like this will take about nine days to paint. Now he has also challenges on repeatability. I mean, trying to just trying to make the left and right side look similar is a challenge. And then when you have to put repeatability across a large number of aircraft, it just becomes impossible. Now, painting or airbrushing, even for plain colors, you know, with basic uh, design, you still need to use skilled painters just to keep an even and thin layer of paint to keep the weight down. Now, when you're talking about complex designs, you will require the best of the best painters. And if the best of the best painter goes on a holiday when your tail needs painting, you're more or less screwed for your schedule. And if it gets sick, then you're just screwed again. So what if you don't want to work around the expert painter's schedule, but you need to have an awesome color gradation? Well, you can have the dot or the hexagon stencil process as the other alternative. I mean, you see the color gradation on the blue part of this American Airlines AC21 tail. It looks good, right? But then when you look close enough, uh, you'll see how it's done. So instead of painting the gradation, you use masking stencils for the dots to make the gradation. Now this enables you to do the gradation without having to wait for the master painter to come back from his holidays. And you can get better consistency in repeating the color gradations. But uh, what's the catch? Well, this. While stencils can be done quickly using computers, someone still has to cut out every single hole in the stencil for each layer. And there are thousands of them. I mean, this just means time and times means money. And therefore, there is a high 
recurring costs both in development of the stencils and the production of the stencils. Now remember, this is like a dot matrix printer in terms of behavior. So there is a limit to the design complexity that you can do before the costs just become utterly ridiculous. Now, this is why American Airlines only use the uh, stencil method for the blue parts of the tail. There is clearly a limit on uh, how much we can push for the complexity in artistic design when using traditional methods. Now this limitation has to be overcome as airlines expect better paint quality and more complex art and livery designs and also the increased production rates for aircraft which will put a strain on current methods. I mean imagine nine days to paint an aircraft there like the Transasia one and if you have to deliver 60 aircraft a month on the A320 family alone then will you just do the numbers. So what is the solution the Airbus came up with? Now remember the dot matrix printer? I mean they were great in the 80s right? I mean every office used them. But what, what were they replaced by? Well they were replaced by the inkjet printer and then the laser printer. So why don't we just go down the same path? Uh, wait, an inkjet printer? Oh yeah, they just scale it up of course. What do you mean scale it up? Well just look at this. I mean the printer head is scaled up. It's an inkjet printer head. You use standard CMYK colors and you can have an optional white primer uh, that you can paint over uh, dark base colors so that it doesn't affect the uh, uh, delivery printing that you want to do and you use solvent ink instead of paint. Now what's different is that you're going to print on a 3D surface rather than on paper. So when you look at this thing, it is huge. It is 7 by 7 meters and the printer head moves in and out by 450 millimeters to allow for the printer head to follow the tail fin contour. So the printer moves side by side following the set contour and it goes line by line from top to bottom just like an inkjet printer, right? Pretty neat, eh? So who's used this? Well, uh, Thomas Cook delivered his first aircraft using direct printing for his tail livery in March 2016. And the reason why they did that is because they were, they were not happy with the EDC film that they were using before. Now the direct printing part was the yellow part of the tail livery and it is 3 kilograms lighter than the adhesive film. It only uses 500 milliliters of ink but if you want to print uh, the whole A320 tail you would need about 1.2 to 1.5 liters of ink. But that is much smaller than the amounts needed for traditional painting. So direct printing is an ecologically friendlier solution that opens up a lot of possibilities for tail designs to be made. At least Frontier Airlines would be interested in this instead of the adhesive film, right? Well, should be. Unfortunately, during the uh, innovation days, Ralph Maurer did not give any news whether Frontier was going to move to direct printing or whether TransAsia is going to do that or whether American Airlines is going to do that. Or maybe I just missed him saying it. And the future? Well, you know the special liveries that they've been doing once in a while? You know, that can be done on almost every single aircraft now if you do this.